and gentlemen, uh, I am Abdurrahman by name, and welcome to Supreme Success Online Lectures. Once again, I am here to discuss with you government. Uh, I want to ask how you doing as a family, as everything. I hope you are doing good, and I hope you have been following us all this while. Please ensure you listen to the lectures, you share with your friends, your colleagues. And ensure you are getting something out of whatever lecture you are listening to. If you have any issue, don't hesitate to contact us on our WhatsApp group. Thank you. So this uh, precious afternoon, we'll be looking into another topic entirely. If you remember in our previous classes, we have taken pre-colonial administration, we have taken colonialism, at the same time we have taken nationalism, also we have looked into indirect system. So today, we will be starting one important topic as far as government too is concerned, and that is constitutional development. I know you'll be smiling when you're like, ah, that, that topic, don't worry, we'll break it down. Now, without much ado, constitutional development simply means how the formulation or the eruption of constitution came into existence in our fatherland. How we, give, uh, like we came across what we call constitution. So we want to look into the roots and how we what we metamorphosed from council to council to councils before we have what a unified constitution. So that's what we'll be examining under this uh, topic. Of course, the word constitution is not new to you, I believe, as a government student. However, for the purpose of record, let's break it down. Constitution simply means a body of rules and regulation, principles, laws that guide the affairs or the relation of a set of persons. So constitution is what is simply a unified law, root, regulation, principle, norms, traditions, or whatever thing you call it, that ensure that, what, that there is regular uh, uh, regulation of activities of human in a particular given society. So once you look into the history of how we came about a unified document that is referred to as constitution. So this, the constitutional development will be looking into uh, firstly the roots of our constitution in Nigeria can be dated back to what? To the Clifford Council, or we call it the Lugard Council, or we call it the Nigerian Council of 1914. That's the root of all. Nigerian Council of 1914. Uh, I'm very sure you are aware of this council. I, at least you must have heard it and what we have heard that before. However, we will break it down. So, the Nigerian Council of 1914 was the first formal institution whereby laws are made. All regulations are made to what? To panel the affairs or to regulate the affairs of a given society. So, this was the first institution or first body that performs what we call a legislative function as far as the history of this country is concerned. Of course, there are a lot of informal ways of doing that. Of course, in each of the nations, we have our own norms and traditions and our regulations. But as far as the word Nigeria is concerned, when after Flora Shows came up with the name, of course, it's the first institution that, would, that discuss laws and regulations among the people. So the Nigerian Council, of 1914 was the making of Lord Lugard to bring set of persons together to look into the affairs, activities of the people and make laws accordingly or rules to guide the affairs of the people. So under the uh, Lugard Council, or Nigerian Council of 1914, we have official members, we have unofficial members, as you know, under constitutional development. The official members are all white. Why the unofficial members are 17 in number? Sorry, 13 in number. I'm sorry. The unofficial are what? 13 unofficial member. Out of the 13 unofficial members, we have seven Europeans. Seven Europeans. That is what? They are white. Seven youth uh, British. You get? And we have what? Six Nigerians. Six Nigerians. So these 
Seven Europeans are to mend the affairs of commerce, industrialization, and all other things that are being anchored by these seven Europeans that formulate the unofficial membership of the Nigerian Council of 1914. So the Nigerian Council, we have six Nigerians. And one important one thing we should note at this juncture is that what? The six Nigerians that were involved were, let me say, the uneducated uh, traditional rulers. They do not really have much knowledge about what is being done at the Legislative Council. So they were just unpicked by who? By the Lord of God. So under them we have what? We have the area of Sokoto. Yes, we have the enemy of Zauza, we have the Allah of Oyo, we have the Oba of Benin, and all other kings, uneducated kings that ruled Nigerian society then. So by implication, these people were uneducated and they have a limited activity or limited participation in the activity of the Nigerian council. So majorly, majorly, they were just like a figurehead or a participant. In the affairs or the activity of the Nigerian Council, they were not what really active or impactful because they do not have much idea about what is happening. And as a result of this, it led to agitation of what of a more inclusive constitution or more inclusive legislative arm, whereby the Nigerians that are well aware of what is happening, that have gone out to educate themselves, can get involved. In the what lawmaking process, rather than what, rather than the others that just serve as figurehead, they could not make impact. Why? Because they do not understand the system. All they understand is what their own norms and traditions to protect the rights, the property, and the lives of their people. So, this is the composition, the brief composition of the Nigerian Council, and we have its advantages and disadvantages. Of course, the disadvantages is overwhelming. Why? Because the Nigerians that were members of the council were more or less like a figurehead members. Why? Because they were not impactful. They were not able to add any value to the council. Why? Because they do not really understand the concept. They do not understand the administration. They do not understand the system being operated and you expect them to come around and make laws to that effect. No. Of course, you can expect something vibrant, something tangible from such a situation. So, as for, as a result of that, the system the uh, Nigerian Council of 1914 was not much impact. It was more of okay, the Europeans were doing the way they like. So it was more of disadvantage to win Nigerians rather than the whites. So that's that about the Nigerian Council in brief. We can easily move to the next one. So as a result of the disadvantages here, there are a lot of disadvantages. And one of it is what? There is better power. The governor general, who was, uh, sorry, as I then we call him governor, who was Frederick Lollingard, has veto power. He can do and not do. Even after making any law or anything, he can veto his no. I'm not going with this. Yes, I'm going with this. He has the power to do and undo. That was the situation of things. So it's more like even whatever deliberations we make, if, the, if it's pleasing to the governor, fine. If it, otherwise, nothing can be done. So it's more or less about academic. Exercise, two levels of academic uh, exercise. So another disadvantage is that what is that we have the white majority in our own fatherland. The official members are all white. The only officials we have what we have white again the majority. So the impact of the Nigerians, even if Nigerians were able to understand, the Nigerians that were there were able to understand and they make a decision. Of course, their decision can't be impactful. Why? Because they are the majority. Since out of seven. The seven will always find their way. The minority will have their say. Why what? The majority will have their way. So even if the, uh, the leaders, I mean, the traditional leaders were like, oh, this is what we want, this is our agitation, this, 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 that. Of course, it's going to come to play. Why? Because the white were in majority. So that's another disadvantage. And that disadvantage of this uh, particular council was that what? Educated Nigerians were not involved. It's only those they feel they can just manipulate, those they feel they do not understand, those they feel they will not challenge their authority, or probably they will not have much to say. Let's just put them so as if it will be like we are ruling over them without we having uh, their members in the system. So that's just it. So just like a, a, a take and carrot uh, system, and they just want to say, uh, 
Let's just do something. So I took their seat, we are cheating here. So these are, there are thousands of disadvantages of this uh, cancer, but that's not our focus. Uh, another thing is, let's look into its advantages. Of course, I have not seen any tangible advantage here. The only advantage I can say is that what? They respect the traditional owners or they preserve our culture. They do not want to interfere into their affairs. So they what? They thought it worthwhile to, to have called the, the traditional owners who were what? Who were the heads before they arrived to what? To the part of the lawmaking body so that they can also burst out in case there's any law, any norms, traditions that is made which is against or in contrary to their traditions and norms. Which to an extent is thoughtful of them, but however, they knew which is more to their own advantage that these traditional rules cannot be in any way or in much way impactful. Why? Because they do not really understand the system. So from there, we will continue uh, our agitation. So as a result of this, of what we have said so far, they agitated for a more inclusive constitution. Remember we said this one was, was in 1914. So Nigerians, particularly the educated ones, requested, they agitated, they were going out. And that's what the activities of nationalism said. So they were like, no, we want a more inclusive system. No, we want people that will do things in the right way. No, we want the educated ones to be part of it. How we just put our fathers that do not really understand the system and say you are learning about that's not fair. So from there, we see the content of the Clifford Constitution, which was one that came after the Legislative Council of 1914 as a result of agitation of Nigerians for a more inclusive uh, legislative, um, legislative council and constitution. So from there, we'll continue with the Legislative Council. Watch out for the Legislative uh, for the Clifford Constitution of 1920. We'll discuss it in depth, the advantages, the disadvantages, and the features of the constitution. If you enjoyed this lecture, I plead with you to kindly share with your friends, your colleagues, or those that you think this knowledge will benefit. Of course, you might be wondering of Microbyte. Uh, MTN, Airtel, Glue, they've done things for us. You can easily buy 250 megabytes for 25 naira night browsing and download all the videos so that you can watch at your convenience. I think that's a better way to go about. Thank you very much. Enjoy yourself.